there are not a lot of earthquakes in the, on the East Coast, so we don't really know a lot about the seismicity. On the other hand, from a geological point of view, we've only been here a very, very short time. California is one of the more active regions. We have a lot of earthquakes. Compared to Japan, it's not that many. Of course, the East Coast has even fewer. In California, we have a magnitude 5.9 earthquake, and it's not felt terribly broadly. So a Bay Area, we would f expect to feel the shaking of a 5.9 earthquake, but we wouldn't expect the people halfway to Los Angeles to feel it, for example. And the East Coast, the bedrock is harder and closer to the surface, and it's more like hitting a bell. And you know, if you hit a bell, it rings, you can feel the vibrations all over the bell. And to a certain extent, the East Coast is much more like that than it is in California, where we're more chunked together pieces of this and that. And so if you hit it, it goes thunk instead of going ring. Could there be a bigger one? We don't, I don't think anybody expects there to be a much bigger one in that area, but we could be surprised. It was a surprise partly because we haven't had any earthquakes of this size in that region. There are earthquakes in Virginia, in other sections of the eastern U.S. There are actually quite a few pockets as you go farther north into the New England area. There was a big earthquake in 1886 in Charleston, which was felt all the way to New York. So, But it was somewhat bigger than this. The buildings there aren't built the same way they are out here. They've Many of them are older. We always learn from earthquakes from the point of view of the buildings, from the point of view of the geology where they happen. That's what we're here for, more or less, and my colleagues on the East Coast are probably excited too.